Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Alexis Ajay, if you do not know me. I like to cover content around food, fashion and lifestyle. My mantra is look good, cook good and live good. You can follow me on Instagram where I share recipes, I share a bit of lifestyle and a lot of fashion, <laughs> a lot of luxury fashion as well, things that I like. You can also, if you're new here, welcome, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss another video. And if you're not new here and you are like one of my down to ride, been riding with me for like God knows how long. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and my content and everything that I do. I really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you. Anyway, so today is a bit of a different video. So I feel like this is a bit of a, vi a video that's been a long time coming, one. And two, I just feel like I haven't, I've rebranded so many times that people are like, okay, so what does she do or who is she or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I really wanted to do a get to know me video so you guys can get to know me more, what I'm about, what I do, um, just any high questions that you guys seem to have all the time. So I've got all your questions here on my phone. Um, so I'm going to go through them now and we're going to get into this video. Some of these questions are, hmm, yeah, I don't know if I want to answer them, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so first question I'm gonna answer is, are you a full-time content creator? If so, what was your previous occupation? Um, there's quite a few questions around this. So basically, I have been self-employed since I was about 20, 20, ooh. Okay, I'll say since 2012, I don't know how old I was. That's, that was 10 years ago, 2012, 20, 24. So about, since 24, I left my job at, um, Selfridges. I used, I've, I've worked in, I was working in retail. I started working in retail when I was 16, fashion retail. Then my last ever job, like working for someone in the sense of like career or, okay, let me just start again. The last, um, I would say job-ish kind of thing um, was when I was 24. I will get into another job that I had later on down the line. So basically, <laughs> My last job was when I was 24, I was working at Selfridges, my first job was at Marks and & Spencer's and then I've worked at Puma, I've worked at um, New Look, I've worked at River Island, I've worked at House of Fraser. I've worked I've worked in so many retail, retail jobs, like loads. And Selfridges was the last one because I wanted to be, um, I wanted to be like a fashion stylist stroke editor, that was like my dream job and yeah so I left to pursue my job in fashion styling. So I was a fashion, and then after that, I was a fashion stylist for two and a half years. During that time, I was also a blogger. I used to have this blog called Glutton for Grandeur um, on Blogspot. And I used to go fashion week. I used to trot up there. I had invites for shows, you know, and I wasn't just turning up just to get packed. I actually had invites for shows. I had invites for a lot of press events. I remember going to a Dolce & Gabbana press event in Bond Street. I used to see like um, the H&M collaborations before they even came out. The last one I saw was the Versace one. When I talk about these things, I actually think oh, I've actually done a lot. And so I was really in the fashion industry. Yeah, and then in my, on the styling side of things, so that was like the blogging, content creating. Back then it was called blogging, but now it's called content creating. But then um, the other side was the styling side. So that was really difficult for me. Fashion industry can be really brutal, they can be really mean. And if you don't have your wits about you and you're, you're not like strong-minded or strong-headed, like they can really make you feel bad about yourself. That's one of the downsides about the fashion industry. But there are beautiful sides to it and I met some incredible people. So my son's sleeping, so you might hear him snoring. <laughs> um, so one, I used to do, I used to style clients and do magazine editorials. One of them was with Fab Magazine. That was like my biggest job back then. Fab Magazine was like a black, Afro, Caribbean black um, magazine, print magazine back then. The thing about me, when I feel like I've failed in something or I haven't achieved my goal, I delete all traces of everything on the internet. I could get rid of everything. So I can't find any of my blogging stuff. I can't find any of my fashion styling stuff other than this, which is really bad. I know, but that's life. I'm, I'm learning. So yeah, I see stylists. I had, you know, I was, 
meeting with like brands like Tom Ford and I remember consulting for Iggy Azalea that was off my own back and then I used to work for this other stylist as well who was an absolute nightmare if I'm being honest he made my life hell but um, I just thought this is the industry and this is how it is so you're just gonna have to suck it up but really and truly that was not cool at all but I'm not gonna go into that I'm not gonna go into who it was I don't want to beat this to be a negative video um, I'll talk about the experiences that I got from it so I helped him me and another stylist um, helped him to source items for Kelly Rowland um, Nicki Minaj those were his like two main clients and especially when Kenny Rowland was doing um, X Factor in the UK that's when I was working with the stylist but unfortunately we never ever got to meet the stylist he would take the stuff go meet the clients dress them etc so that's how it usually worked until I had no I couldn't take it anymore and I left I stopped working underneath him and I used what I had to gain other clients which was Iggy Azalea, Mel B. Unfortunately Mel B that didn't come to fruition. I went I met her, I measured her up but they decided to go with someone else. Um I was in contact with Leona Lewis's manager at one time but that didn't come into fruition and there's just a lot of fr fr frustration on my end because I just felt like okay I'm not breaking through the door, I'm not getting my first client. Then um, Iggy Azalea as well, same thing, um, I remember I pulled for her one time and um, yeah, it, it just, nothing ever worked out, I don't know why, like I just felt like I was like, up against it all the time and it was just so annoying. So anyway, after that period of my life, I decided, you know what, I'm just not going to free, I'm not going to freelance anymore, I'm actually going to go and get a job, I feel like I've got enough experience to get a job in the industry as a senior editor, sen um, not senior, junior editor, junior stylist, that kind of thing. So those were the roles I started applying for. When it, <laughs> I was getting no jobs. I was getting no jobs, I was getting no interviews, I was saying I was underqualified, I was getting told so many things. So you can imagine two and a half years of just struggling as a freelancer and then to be rejected again when you're not getting a job. And then I just really didn't want to go back into retail. I refused, but I still tried to um, work my way into the industry. I had to sign on at the job center just so I can get some money. And then eventually I just, I think something we just kind of broke and I didn't want, not that I didn't want it, but I felt like I couldn't have it. I couldn't be a stylist. I couldn't be an editor. I couldn't work in the industry. The industry didn't want me. I just felt, I just felt really like a failure. That's the only way I could put it. So I got a job as a cleaner. Cleaning offices in central London. Did that for about a year and then, no I did it for two years, sorry. Then I met a really good friend through Instagram who then was very intrigued by what I did. He introduced me to, no, so I then applied for this um, grant through the Prince's Trust, some program to get your business funded, business idea funded. And I had a few business ideas. I turned up with four, but I had to narrow them down to one. And the mentor that I had was really impressed by what is Gym Bites today and what was Gym Bites. Um, and he told me to explore the food side because he said, like, why do you like food? And, you know, I said, it's just something that I do. Like, I post food on Instagram. People love it. And um, then I wasn't doing recipes. I was just posting what my meals. And people really seemed to love it. So I uh, knew that I had a knack for food. I mean, in university, I was that girl bring your chicken, I'll season it up for you and you can take it away. That was what I used to do for my male friends. So <clears throat> eventually um, when I spoke to my mentor about the business idea that I did have, which is Jim Bites, he was so impressed by it. And he's like, yeah, you know, leave the fashion thing alone and, you know, focus on the food, that this idea is awesome. You don't know where this could go. And that's where Jim Bites is now. So just to answer the question, it's a very long answer, but to answer the question, what did I do or what I used to do before content creating, that's what I used to do. So then I opened my business Gym Bites, which was sold in Selfridges, which was salads in a jar. Um, and that blew up. But again, I had to close that business because I just couldn't keep up with the, I just couldn't keep up. I felt like the business was growing bigger than I could manage. And I, I, I didn't plan for certain things and 
I didn't know how to manage the business properly. I felt like if I had a business manager, I just felt like I couldn't keep up and it was becoming really overwhelming and it was affecting my health. So I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna close the business. It, I lost Selfridges as vendors. I, I lost Selfridges as um, a place that my product was in and I lost all my other um, retailers as well. So it was, that took a toll on me as well so that's why i closed that business and that's what i did up until the point that i am a content creator now sorry it was a very long answer so next question is what made you start cooking so like i said it's just something that i do i'm good at cooking um i like to cook i enjoy cooking cooking is something that i really really enjoy doing so i learned when i was like seven to make stew my mum taught me how to make rice and stew when i was like seven and at ten was it ten nine i think nine years old i nearly burnt down my house so yeah i've been i've been in the kitchen <laughs> i've been in the kitchen so it's something that has always been in me like it's natural to me and then i decided to make a business out of make a food business so yeah so what would your dream job be or dream job to have i don't want to have a job i want to create services and businesses that serve others if that makes sense i kind of want to be a mogul more than anything and a mogul is basically someone who has like multiple businesses and is successful at basically all of them and you know has their hands their you know in different pockets so it could be food it could be fashion it could be beauty um that's where i see myself to be honest i love fashion i live and breathe it naturally like before food it was always a big passion of mine and i think that's where a lot of people are um a bit like but don't you do food um no sis i've always been about fashion a lot of the girls who've been following me since instagram started will know that I'll, i've always been a fashion girl um i just didn't pursue it through and i think that's one of my problems i don't pursue things all the way to the end but we're changing that now so definitely want to be like a household name a mogul that's that's where i want to be in life definitely don't want a job no offense to anyone who wants a dream job but that's not for me please where did you get your diamond studs from if you're talking about these i got these from where did i get them from a place in stratford called sapphire i think i've mentioned them before but i was calling them sephora it's actually sapphire in um stratford westfield they're not diamond they're cubic so kind of, um yeah i don't know if i can manage diamond earrings yet because i'm someone that takes off earrings and i don't see them again so to get a diamond pair <laughs> Girl, not yet. So what do you and your husband do for a living? So right now I'm content creating and I'm in the process of starting a few new businesses that will reveal themselves in due time. Some you'll never know it's mine and some you may know it's mine. As for me and my husband, we do property, property development together and he's also an architect. So that's what he does. So property developer and architect and I oversee parts of the property development business that we have together kind of thing. So yeah, that's that's what we do. How long have you lived in the UK? I was born in the UK, born and bred here. Um, parents are Nigerian, so I'm Nigerian, but I was born in the UK. Do you miss nine to five fashion? Absolutely not. No absolute favorite accessory in your wardrobe i'm gonna go for a bag fun fact i never used to be a bag person i was really much about shoes i always did love shoes actually i would have the same brick of brat brock down bag seams splitting and all sorts but my shoes yeah i think it comes with age because now i'm older i love my bags so um it definitely will be my birkin my green bamboo green birkin togo leather with palladium the palladium or platinum one of them hardware yeah the phw <laughs> um that is my favorite accessory i love that bag so much do you see yourself forever living in the uk uk is bad vibes no absolutely not right now there's one hurricane doing us is it a hurricane or 
thunderstorm or storm like it's so windy and obviously you can get bad weather anywhere you go but honestly now nah, UK I'm just not here for it like nah every day there's, I've got a cold my kids are picking up a cold there's a virus there's this there's that like the UK is just the weather nah I deserve a hot country sorry more like out I think out of the two three sixty five days in a year, I think about two hundred and sixty five days of them need to be spent in a hot country and then I can come back to the UK for holidays and visit for, you know, a change of scenery. Did you go to university? If so, what did you study? So I did go to university. Um I mentioned I did my masters. I did that at what did I do that? University of West London in Ealing. That's where I studied food business. But in my my first degree, I did that at Roehampton University, and I studied what did I study again? Media studies. I think that's why I have such a knack with creativity. And I did media for GCSEs, and I did it in um, college, and I also did it in uni. So I did media media studies in university. What is something that you took from your university experience? Oh, university was really interesting for me. Um, I had so much fun. I would say if anyone here is young and is just going to university, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna find your boyfriend there. Okay. If you didn't find him in college or at the end of university, forget about it. Because if you meet a guy on like first year, He's not there for any relationships, so sis, forget about it. That's one of the experiences that I had to go away. I remember I fell for this guy, and yeah, I really thought like, ugh, anyway, long story short, just don't do it to yourself. Just go to university and study. Do what your parents send you there to do. Would you send your children abroad for school? Yes, I would when it's time for university and not before. So I think what, 18, 16? When did you go to uni? 18, innit? Yeah, 18, yeah. So yeah, you can go study abroad once you're 18, definitely. What presets do you use, if any? So I use VSEO to um, edit my pictures for like filters and those kind of things. But a lot of the time I don't really edit my pictures, you know, I literally just, oh, I don't have any presets on my pictures. Sorry, I do edit my pictures, but I don't have presets on my pictures. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I literally take a picture and I post it as it is without any filters, any manipulation whatsoever. That's sometimes, more times. Um, but if I, I have got some presets on VSEO that I might go into every now and then. So I will put those presets in the description box for you um, so you can use them if you want to. Oh, this is a good question. So the biggest downside to being an influencer? I think the biggest downside for me is that people still don't understand what it is to be a content creator stroke influencer. And I feel like, especially when it comes to family members and friends, people look down on you for that choice of career or pursuing that lane of work, so to speak. And obviously that's just down to you know not being educated and understanding what it means and you have to explain to some people but i think that's one of the biggest downsides for me that people just influence on and people mock it as well and i just feel like they go oh now everyone's an influencer so what now everyone is a lawyer now everyone is working in retail now everyone is like what does it matter there's so many of the same jobs out there that people fulfill every single day but they don't get mocked but the moment you're an influencer it's oh she's an influencer now oh sorry influencer i'm sorry do i offend you do I, why why are you mad like why are you upset why why does it trigger something in someone when they're an influencer and for me it's i find that really really annoying like i find it really annoying and i always clap back because i can't stand it so have you always been a confident woman? If not, what helped you? Um, confident woman, that's a that's an interesting question. Um, I would say yes, I have always been kind of confident in who I am. Everyone has insecurities, don't get me wrong. I definitely have insecurities, but basically if I walk into a room, I hold my head up high. I'm not I'm not that person to walk in like no, I hold my head up high. And I think 
I know I'm buff. I know that I look good. I know I have an amazing sense of style. I know that, you know, I'm the bomb diggity. So why wouldn't I have confidence? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to explain this. Um, I mean, my confidence comes from God anyway, because I'm a child of God and I know what he's instilled in me. So I have no reason to be like timid or, you know, feel like I'm less than if that makes sense don't get me wrong I have my moments the enemy definitely sometimes works and um you know the devil's a liar you have to just rebuke any thoughts of like inadequacy or like doubt of yourself you just have to rebuke them and send them back to hell and know that you are the ish girl would you ever hire a PA yes I would I've got one but she's virtual but if I could have one to come to my house every single day and help me out with my life and work, I would. I actually would. So if you are the PA, please let me know your rates. <laughs> let me know your rates. When did your interest in fashion start? I love your style. Thank you so much. Okay, so my dad is really stylish. I grew up knowing my dad to be really, really stylish. And my dad actually used to be a stylist back in the day one of his clients when he was living well still lives up north but in manchester was um what's that guy's name i don't remember i remember that group oh, he was the only black guy in the group one love for the mother's pride one love. what are they called uh, i'll figure it out and put it down here somewhere but anyway he used to style the gentleman the black gentleman in that group my dad has always just been so stylish like he is he was he's always been stylish and then he used to dress my mum up in the most incredible chic outfits like i'm actually gonna find pictures and put them up um he used to style my mum in these most the most incredible pieces she used to look so chic and i think just growing up really and like when i would go and visit my dad up north he'd like i'd come back down with new clothes that he has bought and I mean, just growing up, he got me my first first pair of Versace trousers. Um, this brand that he introduced me to as well, and got me a pair of trousers from them. Like, yeah, my dad was. I think my dad, and then just growing up, naturally, you know, some things are just in the genes. So I just feel like I inherited it, my fashion style and sense of style, and just the way I put things together from my dad, just seeing him, what he used to do and like the things that he used to buy me. And yeah, I just think, I, I have to give this one to my dad, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and then obviously 16, um, all my jobs were in retail or fashion, except for Marks and Spencer's, which was a bit of food and retail. But um, yeah, after that, everything has been fashion. So I just, always loved and breathed fashion like I remember doing an internship at Now magazine which was quite a big magazine back then Now magazine I remember one of the editors one time she came in with a Chanel box and I didn't even know what Chanel was then um too tough which is like girls look what I've just bought and then she brought out a classic flap because I remember it a black one um with lambskin and then everyone was like oh my gosh and everyone was like screaming and I used to work in the fashion cupboard and go through all the samples and all the pieces and they were like do you want any of these pieces you can have them you can take them home makeup samples all that kind of stuff so that was around the age of when was that that was in uni I think my last year so I was about 18 stroke 19 um and I used to dress up and go into work and nobody used to pay me no mind at the internship they just went here's this little girl this little black girl in her ridiculous outfits um so yeah i've just always always loved fashion and been about it always oh this is a good question do you budget for expensive items and save towards them sometimes yes yeah, sometimes no uh, there might be something that i want like there's a bag that i really want now that i mentioned in my wish list it's about 1800 so it's not the smartest thing to chuck money at right now because we're really much in a season of saving and investing at the moment so that's probably something that will come as i just keep putting money away but then there's times that i might see something and just 
just buy it especially if I see it for a great price oh yes yes I'm going to buy it I'm going to buy it because that's just a one-off you're not gonna get that price again so um, it really just depends but yeah sometimes I do save and sometimes I don't do you ever visit Nigeria question mark question mark okay yes I do <laughs> um, last time I went to Nigeria was 2016 so it has been a while but yeah I used to go to Nigeria a lot before um, going Ghana and I'm hopefully trying to plan another trip very soon so yes I do go to Nigeria to answer your question what's the age difference <laughs> I like this question what's the age difference between you and hubby I adore your relationship well thank you very much the age difference is three years so I'm three years older then my husband, he is 31 and I am 34. I met him when he was 25 and I was 28. Yes, people can call me a cradle snatcher, call it what you want. We are happily married, we've got two kids and we love each other dearly. So yeah, that's the age gap. How did you and your hubby meet? Through Twitter. He sent me a direct message, slid into the DMs and got parred terribly because I just was not interested. I was not interested in that. What do you want? Um and the way he talked, he spoke so road, like, yeah, man this and man that and mad ting and I was just like, who is this vagabond in my DMs? Can you just remove yourself? <laughs> and then he followed me on Instagram and then I went on Instagram, I saw follow for him and I went on his page and I was like, oh his page is really cool, like it was quite artistic. Um, I loved his page, like it was very artistic actually, very abstract. Um, then I saw he was studying his masters in architecture and I'm like, these don't sound like the same people. The one on Twitter and the one on Instagram, they sound, they, they seem like different people to me. So I, you know, I entertained conversations with him because his Instagram saved him. And I thought, okay, there's obviously another side to him. So let me not judge so quickly. So I gave him a chance. He followed me on Snapchat and asked me out for lunch. And I was just like, no, 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 no. No, I parted him on Twitter. He asked me to come to some music video. And I was just like, <laughs> no, bro, I'm not coming to no music video. Do I look like a video girl? No, I'm not coming. So, after that, I think then he asked me, what do I do? And I remember that time in my life, I never used to answer that question because I was so embarrassed of what I did. And that was, I was a cleaner at the time. So I just didn't answer that question. And then he followed me on Snapchat. Then he posted a video of him cooking chicken wings and they looked good. And I was just like, oh, I didn't know you could cook. So what you can cook as well. And he was like, yeah, 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 man cooks and blah, 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 blah. Then he sent me like a video. And he was like, oh, what, you tried to par man or something along them lines. Um, but now you want to talk to me because I'm cooking or something along the lines. And obviously I was doing the whole food thing. So that obviously the food got my attention because I'm a foodie. Like, that's just me. Um... And I started laughing and he was like, oh, let me take you out to lunch. And I was like, nah, I'm not really on date, you know, guys from the internet, like, they're mad. And he's like, oh, it's just lunch, like, it's not a big deal. I'm not asking you to come to dinner. So I agreed to meet him for lunch, um, but I made sure that if you're going to like me, you're going to like me. So I turned up in a tracksuit. My hair was, like, so raggedy. I remember I was working that day. Um, my hair was not, it was just anyway i had a woolly hat on track gray tracksuit bottoms puffer jacket <laughs> no makeup and i showed up to canary wolf brian burger byron burger and yeah that was technically our first date he calls it the first date i don't think it's the first date because i wasn't even sure if i liked him after that but i showed up and um yeah he looked at me like he had seen an angel and he was falling in love there and then like head over heels for me you would never admit it but that is the truth so yeah that's the that's to answer your question that's how we met okay this is fun something that many people don't know about you Ooh, what do people not know about me oh fun fact i use this um 
a lot actually and when I tell people they're always so surprised so when I was younger I used to be in a performing arts group called Chicken Shed and um, we used to perform on stage I remember we sang at the Royal Albert Hall once like a massive group of us um, I remember briefly like just from my childhood um, various I think that we did cats once um, and then what the one of my biggest memories and one of my most grateful memories from being you know a performing arts student at Chicken Shed was I got to meet Lady Diana um, when I was 10 years old and I still remember the day I remember my mom putting my hair up in a bun and I remember we was told to wear all white she got me these sheer white tights and I think I wore like a white suit or a white dress I can't remember but it was a skirt yeah I think I wore a skirt suit and um, we had to go somewhere and they picked some members of you know the chicken shed performing arts students and um, yeah I remember us standing in a row and then she came down I don't know what the event was or what the the occasion was we, I don't know where I was either but she came and she was shaking people's hands and then she came to me she, and I curtsied for her and she shook my hand and I, that's just a memory I'll always live with because yeah Lady Diana was just incredible she was a iconic woman when it came to style when it came to fashion she was iconic and god rest her soul you know she was gone too soon she was way ahead of her time like way ahead like she was so classy chic like loved lady diana so yeah that's a memory that i'm gonna live with forever i'm so happy that i got to do that and i can share it with people and yeah many people do know that so now you guys know you know that i met Favourite social media platform to interact? Of course it's, sorry YouTube, it's going to be Instagram because Instagram is just so free and easy to use, like I just love Instagram but YouTube's slowly becoming my favourite just because I feel like I never really gave YouTube a chance, like I always had the expectation that it was going to frustrate me, editing was going to frustrate me, watching my followers grow was going to frustrate me so I was always frustrated but this time I'm just doing it because I love doing it and I love recording videos I love watching other people's YouTubes now it's like a creative outlet for me so I'm really really enjoying YouTube so it's slowly creeping up next to Instagram but it's definitely Instagram and YouTube and then maybe TikTok after if you're a queen for the day what law would you want to pass Ooh. I was queen for the day what law would I want to pass okay this is a bit deep but my thoughts really do go out to children who have been sexually abused um, victims of you know paedophilia that kind of thing so if I was a queen for the day I would pass a law that anyone convicted of such things <laughs> rots in jail <laughs> For life <laughs> honestly like the way they get away with murder murder but like the way they get away with these things with children I just can't like so sorry to take it the left but if I was queen for a day that's definitely a law I would pass in a heartbeat like quickly because a lot of them get 18 months three years five years good behavior they're out and they're not on some sex offender register nah man that's not good enough you need proper punishment so you can't do it again Another question, flowers or plants? Flowers. As much as I actually know, plants, ooh. Depends on the, my mood. Plants, oh, plants, you really have to look after them. Flowers, you have them for a time period and they go. So, I mean, oh, it's a hard one. Flowers, I love flowers. Flowers are so beautiful, so I'll, I'll go with flowers. Dream holiday location. Oh, I really wanna go to Zanzibar. That's somewhere that's been on my bucket list for so long and we did have plans to go there some years back but um, yeah that didn't happen but yeah Zanzibar is definitely on my bucket list I love I really want to go there badly it just looks so beautiful oh and Fiji Fiji Islands and Hawaii <sighs> okay 
Zanzibar, Fiji Islands and Hawaii, those are my dream, like ultimate dream locations. Those are places I want to go to badly. Favourite self-care activity? Favourite self-care activity, um, I would say getting my hair done. I love getting my hair done. I mean, when I get my hair done, I feel like a new woman. So I got my hair done yesterday, which will be, I don't know what day that will be when this comes out, but today is the... 18th of February, so I got it done on the 17th of February yesterday. I did it at um, Elite Hair Lounge. So I got a silk press, I got a wash silk press, and I also had to add some tracks for me just to give my hair a bit more volume because I have very fine hair. I have length, but I have fine hair. So I just wanted something with a bit more volume, something that I can play around with and just really enjoy naturally. So yeah, I like self, this is my favourite for my self care, getting my hair done and feeling very beautiful. If your 28 year old self was next to you, what would you be saying? What scripture would you use for her? Hmm, I would say Romans 8.28, which is quite um, ironic. You know, all things work out for the good of those who love the Lord. That scripture has been one of my favourite scriptures for a long time and I remember when I was 28 I went through something with someone and I flew out the country just to get my head right. Um, in that time my husband came along and I just wasn't in a space to entertain him too much hence why me brushing him on Twitter and Instagram and all those kind of places I wasn't really interested. Um, so I flew out to Tunisia for three days by myself. I just booked a flight. I got into an argument with someone and it really affected me. And I was really upset and I just thought, you know what, sorry, I'm just gonna get out of this country for a little while. Why? Because the UK is a bad vibes. <laughs> um, so I flew out and I just took my Bible, took a few things and I just went out there and just prayed, read my Bible and just, you know, I just needed peace and serenity and I got that when I was there and I was 28. I didn't know what was coming for me shortly after. I didn't know I was going to meet my husband and fall deeply in love with him and get married two and a half years later. So, I mean, yeah, that's the scripture I would have told myself and I would have just told myself to be patient, like good things are going to come. Something has ended but something better is coming along. So that's definitely... Um, what I would have told my 28 year old self. Thoughts on investing, investing is good. Invest where you can. We have investments in various places, but understand it before you do it. Because some people do things that they don't understand and then they get themselves in some sort of trouble. So yeah, I, I, I think investing is very good. It's a good way to set up your children and secure their future in various ways other than having money in the bank as well. I really, 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 really encourage investments are you married you don't wear a ring or a band <sighs> right so i just want to debunk something really quickly because a woman is not wearing a wedding ring or wedding band or even engagement ring does not mean that she's not married there are some people that can't afford wedding rings or engagement rings or bands there's some people that have lost their wedding rings or wedding bands or engagement rings some people just choose not to wear it because it's not even biblical it's not by force if you're a christian it doesn't say anything in the bible about wearing a wedding ring or engagement ring this is quite a worldly thing anyway so i mean honestly i don't wear a band because we haven't had our grand white wedding and that's due to reasons that i don't wish to speak about here but if you want to know if I'm married, I can show you my marriage certificate. We've been to the registry. We've had our traditional. For me, a marriage is as a We took our vows at our traditional wedding. So we was married from our traditional wedding. Everything after our traditional wedding was just for formality's sake. Legals, the um, registry, white wedding, because we were going to have a nice white wedding and a party. It wasn't necessary. So for that reason, we haven't had our white wedding but i was meant we were meant to, i'm just gonna explain was meant to have our white wedding six months after our traditional but a family member passed away and we were no longer able to have it because it was just too close to 
when that person passed away. That's when we were meant to exchange our wedding bands. And yeah, I just haven't had one since then. I don't need one. I'm happy with my engagement ring. So to answer that question that everyone keeps asking me, <laughs> that's the answer. Because I've had that question so many times in past Q and A's, um, but I just never answer it. But that's the answer. So now if anyone asks, I'm just gonna look, go and watch my YouTube because I'm not gonna explain again. <sighs> but anyway, guys, that is my Q and A done. My get to know me. I hope that gives you some sort of insight to who I am, what I've done, um, the things I've achieved, the reason why I like fashion, luxury fashion. I know a lot of people just didn't understand but I hope now watching this just gives you some sort of clarity and you get who I am a bit more and you like me a bit more as well <laughs> but yeah thank you guys so much for watching um I'm wearing today a lovely Lao Brands um mesh top it's one of my favorite tops in my wardrobe the structured padded um shoulders is just a thing for me like i just absolutely adore it um i'm wearing it with just a black bra and i'm wearing my celine um bracelets that i've had for quite a while now um and yeah that's what i'm going to say on my studs from sapphire so yeah guys that's it from me today thank you so much for watching make sure you subscribe give this video a thumbs up if you liked this video and and i hope to see you in the next one make sure you follow me on instagram as well okay bye